Hello friends, I am Ayantika and in this video I will be discussing how Physerum polyciferum can be used as a model organism for various techniques, uh, especially for uh, cell, culture, uh, cell division uh, studies, for studies in genetics, in biocomputing. So Physerum polyciferum is a slime mold and if you are uh, curious to know about slime mold or Physerum polyciferum, I have made videos about Physerum polyciferum and slime molds and all the links I have put in the description box so in this video I will be discussing only about physerum how it is used as a model organism in lab so uh, being uh, small that is uh, it is uh, macroscopic but uh, very uh, small in size so it is very easy to manipulate it and observe because it, if it is my, it, if, if it was uh, microscopic, then it it would uh, require uh, much more uh, complexity to study it. But being macroscopic and uh, uh, unis a very simple uh, structure that is the unicellular, this uh, Physerum polyciferum, it is very easy to manipulate it and observe the results and analyze it. Also, uh, this is uh, we can prepare genetically identical individuals from a single plasmodium just by stimulating it to divide. So, any uh, plasmodium uh, of um, Physerum polyciferum, any plasmodium, if it gets sufficient amount of food, then after a certain time it matures and divides into identical cells. So, this identical for any genetic study to uh, start, uh, uh, whether it is classical genetics or uh, mutation, uh, mutation uh, for any uh, mutational study, we need to have a um, similar clonal genetic pool. So, uh, for that reason, Physerum polyciferum is a very good uh, model organism. Also, uh, as it uh, obtains the nutrition, so it divides repeatedly and uh, the division rate increases when there is good amount of nutrition in the media. For the same reason, this organism that is Physerum polyciferum can be used to uh, study the cell cycle as well as the nuclear division cycle. And if uh, we want to have some mutations, then also they are very good in mutational studies. Apart from mutational studies, study in cell cycle, it can be also used as a model organism to study the motility and cellular differentiation in fungi or the chemotaxis. So, though it is a slime mold, but slime molds were earlier considered uh, fungi. Now, they are included in protest, but uh, uh, they have certain general characteristic that is similar to fungi. In fact, uh, the protists they are divided into three categories. That is the animal-like protist, plant-like protist, and fungi-like protist. So, this Physerum polyciferum, it is a model organism for uh, study of fungal um, uh, com uh, complex uh, fungi we cannot um, use it as a study organism but we can easily use physerum to study the their mode of uh, their physiology of a higher fungi Falserum polyciferum has also got antiviral property. If any uh, plant is inoculated with this uh, virus, tobacco mosaic virus or tobacco ring virus, and uh, at the same time this extract of uh, Physerum is um, injected, then the plant is found to show no symptoms of viral infection, no symptoms of disease. So this uh, shows that uh, it has got um, antiviral property and also uh, this um, Physerum polyciferum its plasmodium it's very simple but at the same time it is very it is uh, very efficient in taking environmental cues of the source of food and also the source of light and it it uh, takes the environmental cues and navigate this uh, uh, to the rest part so that they can optimize the nutrient 
uptake. Now, this is a very important characteristic and scientists have used this characteristic for making various bio tools, especially in biocomputing that we'll discuss in the next few slides. And at the same time, it was observed that uh, it, uh, it is habituated to various repellent when they are used for a continuous period of time. Any repellent, say for example any chemical or light, if they are applied for a, uh, after a specific interval of time, it was observed that the Physerum polyciferum, it, um, after a certain period of time, it uh, didn't show much stimulus. That is, if it is a repellent, then it will be an aversion stimuli. But um, uh, when it was uh, given continuously uh, um, at a uh, specific interval, the Physerum polyciferum, um, its uh, plasmodium was found to be habituated to that uh, negative stimuli. So, when the stimuli was applied after a very considerable long break, then only uh, this aversion of uh, negative stimuli was seen. So, from this, it was inferred that... Uh, they have the same uh, sensory fatigue, same sensory fatigue as that of uh, other. Now, this is a very um, important diagram. Uh, actually, this is a Nobel uh, Prize winning discovery. And this is called the shortest path problem, where uh, the the Physerum polyciferum, it was inoculated and um, and two sources, two sources of uh, food were kept and one at the uh, point of inoculation and another at the very middle, uh, very end of the maze. And it was found that the mycelium first grew all over the maze and later it uh, found the shortest path to the source of food. This was the initial point and this is the final point. So, this shortest path problem, this was easily solved by Physerum polyciferum. This, uh, this is a very uh, intelli intelligent uh, uh, process, we should say, because this uh, type of uh, interaction was also found in uh, eusocial insects, uh, for example, bees and um, even in the ants. So, what they do is that they transfer information from one, per, one um, insect to another that there is a source of food. But here in Physerum polyciferum, first they travel all over the uh, maze and later um, they, um, as they moved along a path, they has left their trail in the form of mucus. The certain chemicals in the mucus, they have left in the mucus trail. They provided information that this path was already traveled and they didn't contain any food. So, only those paths where food was present was uh, easily maintained by Physerum polyciferum. So, this is the shortest path problem uh, where uh, the Physerum reached uh, the food uh, source uh, in the shortest path at the end of the uh, experiment. This is also a variation where the Physerum polyciferum, it was first inoculated and um, um, food sources, these are the food sources. The food sources were kept at, uh, at uh, places that represented uh, areas and the major towns around Tokyo. So, this, is, this was the Tokyo and uh, other food sources, they were uh, kept in uh, according to the places, they, uh, according to major towns around Tokyo. And the, after a certain period of time, uh, it was seen that the mycelium it of the Physerum polyciferum, it grew and it formed a network like structure and we at the very um, uh, last that is the after uh, 26 hours uh, it was seen that uh, the physerum the final network represented the network of the railway lines um, that connected tokyo to the uh, surrounding major towns 
So uh, from this also uh, we see that uh, this uh, five serum they are very efficient in building the shortest path between two sources of food. And this experiment it was done by the Hokkaido University, but later this experiment was. Um, and this uh, Tokyo model, this was um, again repeated for connecting uh, UK, uh, various towns in UK, various towns in the Iberian Peninsula of uh, Spain and Portugal. And even in, I've seen uh, certain uh, experiments where it was uh, certain research papers where they were uh, done connecting the major towns in America. So this repetitions was done and the same result was obtained that they represented the railway line or the highways between the uh, two uh, places. Uh, two, uh, between the Hokkaido University uh, researchers, they also found out that when the Physerum polyciferum plasmodium, it is uh, simulated with cold and hot, um, uh, dry and um, wet temperature um, climate. They, after a certain interval, uh, they uh, they were able this uh, Physerum uh, plasmodium. It was able to anticipate that. It was able to anticipate that there is uh, when the there, there will be dry condition and when there will be wet condition that is in the form that when they were um, anticipating dry condition the physerum polyciferum its uh, plasmodium contracted and it expanded when they were expecting wet condition so it can easily anticipate the um, climatic condition it can take environmental cues of uh, the period then again uh, the spicerum polyciferum uh, when they were grown uh, with uh, between two sources of food say for example one is rich uh, in uh, carbohydrate and another is rich in protein so these two asymmetrical sources of food were uh, and the plasmodium was uh, um, growing so it was later found out that if um, we take any part of the plasmodium and analyze it we take any part of the plasmodium and analyze it then we find that any plasmodium in any portion later they have the similar composition in nutrient this shows that whether the source of food is balanced or not but there is the transport of nutrient from one uh, uh, from one source there is a transport of nutrient from one source to other um, parts of the plasmodium and the plasmodium of physerum it is able to maintain the nutritional balance throughout its plasmodium now stainer tree problem uh, we know that uh, uh, physerum is able to it is able to uh, find the shortest distance between two sources of food. So is the same case in another model called the Stegner tree problem, where uh, the minimum minimum distance between two um, uh, places or n number of places uh, was usually found. So this Physerum polyciferum, it is just uh, it uh, it uh, solves the distance problem, the shortest distance problem, similar to the Stainer tree problem. And for the same reason, the this Physerum polyciferum has been uh, used as a model organism for finding out uh, for finding out the electrical network's shortest path. And uh, more research is going on whether this Physerum polyciferum can be used to find the shortest network so far um, the transport is concerned. But so far all these are done on a lab scale. And uh, having gained all the information that uh, Physerum is a model stainer tree problem organism 
and it is able to solve the maze problem and able to solve the transport shortest um, route uh, between the uh, sources of food uh, when the number of uh, sources is more than uh, two so after gaining all this information researchers they started to stimulate the fiserum polyciferum into a biocomputing device now what is biocomputing biocomputing is an interaction between biology engineering computer where any living cell or its component say for example dna or rna it is uh, it is used to perform various functions such as for example uh, a storage of data transport of data and for the processing so this might sound very complex but actually cell is already computing the dna in cell it contains a lot of information so whether uh, what type of protein will be produced and when it will be produced so all this information that is stored in the dna during the transcription dna transfers this information to rna which later it um, it uses the ribosomes and amino acids to produce protein so what is happening the dna it, it it has amassed all information and later it is transforming this information to rna and rna rna by its various logical operations using ribosomes and uh, the amino acid is producing protein as a final output by logical operations of the rna i mean that um, uh, the ribosomes when they synthesize protein uh, for any amino acid for the correct sequence uh, any protein has a definite sequence of amino acid every different protein each and every protein they have a different amino acid sequence so while producing any protein there is a lot of logical operations that is going on by the uh, that is done by the rna so already the we see that the cell is computing on the other hand whether it is a computer whether it is a uh, supercomputer despite its uh, speed but they are uh, they are machines so they have this wear and tear they they easily heat up and they consume a lot of energy so uh, it was um, it was um, thought that uh, this uh, biological system can be put to computing and in fact though this fiserum it it is it was stimulated by biological cues as well as um, the chemical cues as well as the light or dark cues so the reaction uh, of fiserum it was uh, this organism's reaction it was uh, successfully it was uh, it was stored in a usb sensor and that reaction of the fiserum it was used to control a robot this is what i was talking about as bio computing so here we see that uh, this fiserum it has been used in a range of uh, lab experiments whether it is used in the uh, classical nuclear genetics whether it is used in the in the uh, cell motility study whether it is used in the cell division study whether it is used in the biocomputing or solving the stainer tree problem uh, this uh, fiserum polyciferum slime mold is a model organism for a wide diverse um, diverse uh, field of research in fact uh, i have uh, done many uh, videos uh, regarding this uh, many uh, uh, algae which are used as model organism but uh, this fiserum the slime mold fiserum is the only organism which has so diverse application as a lab model organism so with this i end my video and if you like the the video 
do share with your friends and if you even don't like it do write in the comment section um, what are the my areas of uh, improvement because your comment will help me to improve and do subscribe to my channel for your uh, because your subscription it encourages me and thank you for watching this video